because I would rather be disciplined and make this and put it out there than decide I'm taking the day off because then when Monday rolls around, maybe I don't have a good idea. What is up guys, it's Arneg and welcome back. This week we are going to take a look at how we can create this holographic imagery. There are a couple of steps to take and a lot of neat little tips and tricks along the way. So stick around, roll the intro. Okay, so first things first, let's import all the files we want to work on. Hit Ctrl or Command I to open up the import window. Select your files and click import. Drag and drop your background footage or photo into the composition. Next, add the clip you chose as a hologram into the scene and if needed, time the endpoint accordingly. There are several ways to place your footage into the scene. If you have a moving shot, you need to either use the tracking option that comes natively with After Effects, or if it is a more complex scene, or the track just doesn't work quite well enough, you can also use Mocha for that. I will also cover the Mocha workflow in a future video, but we do not need to dive into that today. We are just working with a static shot, so I'll make it as easy as possible. Which means to scale down the clip, adjust the position, and then search for the effect Corner Pin. With this effect you can simply drag the corners of the layer. That way we can fake a 3D positioning of the object without a lot of CPU calculations. It's fast, easy and does the trick surprisingly often. Once you're happy with the placement, we can go into the effects that'll make this whole scene more realistic. Right now the video just sits in the frame and does not really look like part of it. First, let's do something about the beginning. A frame that just suddenly appears out of nowhere is just... Nah. So instead set the anchor point at the bottom of the layer. I'm using this handy tool for that, because it just saves a lot of time. However, you can also hit Y on your keyboard, or click this icon up here to choose the anchor point tool, and then move the anchor point to wherever you want. By the way, if you hold down Ctrl or Command while dragging, the anchor point will snap onto set point of the layer. Now release the mouse button and you're good to go. Hit S on your keyboard to bring up the scale values. And set a keyframe for the final value. Move it a little down the timeline and set another keyframe at the same position of 0. Jump ahead by maybe 10 frames or whatever suits your style and move the second keyframe to this position. Do the same thing for the opacity as well. You can access opacity values with a keyboard shortcut, well, you guess it, with T. I mean, come on Adobe. Set the keyframes and maybe move them over just a tiny bit to stagger the animation. It will feel a little more natural. And you know what, I don't like how crisp the image is, so I'm gonna add a Gaussian blur. And actually we can animate that as well. So same thing, add a keyframe maybe something about 20, move over and add another one. I think about two is fine, just to make it really subtle. Now, let's start stacking up some more effects on this one. Start applying a curves adjustment. Add blue and some green into the image and maybe take out some red tones. This will give it more of a display blue greenish sci-fi look. Follow up by adding a wave warp effect and set it up as follows. First off, change the direction from 90 to 0 to make it impact the horizontal axis. Turn the wave type to square to get rid of this wavy ugliness. Set wave height down to 1 and wave width to something around 30 or 40 or something like that. If you want to, you can also play around with the phase values and or the wave speed. I alt option click the stopwatch to type in our good old friend Wiggle. For the values go with something like 0.2 and 0.2. Again, it's really subtle, but those small adjustments and additions really do add up in the end. 
Okay, I think we're getting there. Next up, I would like to make this green act as a light source for the hologram. In this case, it is really easy to do. Simply duplicate the background layer with Ctrl or Command D, drag it all the way to the top and simply mask out only the screen. You can go as accurate as you want, but it actually doesn't really matter too much and you will see why in just a bit. First, add another curves adjustment and boost the curve so it really pops out. Then search for the effect Radial Blur. In the effect settings, change the type from Spin to Zoom and increase the amount a lot to better see what you're working with. Move the center point by clicking this target-like icon and just click somewhere underneath the screen. Move it around a little bit until you find an angle that fits the scene best. As with everything else in our scene, we want this to be animated as well. So again, set the according keyframes for the amount, so the light doesn't just pop up and let the layer fade in as well. Alright, looking already pretty good, but there are still a few more things to improve. So far we have only worked on the video layer itself and stacked everything right onto it. And honestly, that's not the best way to do it. If you had to change anything about the clip that is used, you also have to reposition all the keyframes you have set already. To avoid that, either pre-compose right from the start or just save your eyes right now. Highlight the video layer and hit Ctrl or Command plus Shift and C to pre-compose. Name it Hologram Video, select Leave All Attributes and click OK. All the effects we have applied to the layer are now on the composition instead. And if we open up the hologram com, we now can work on the edit or replace the footage altogether. What I like to do, for example, is to soften the edges of the hologram. It feels off to have these sharp edges on a hologram, doesn't it? So I go into the video composition, highlight the video layer and double click the rectangle tool up here to create a mask around the edges of the layer. Now open up the mask properties by navigating down or hit F on your keyboard to bring up the feathering. Let's try something like 40 pixels. I think the feathering amount seems fine to me, but we still have these sharp edges. So we have to expand the mask further into the frame. To do so, toggle down all the mask settings and under mask expansion make it negative 40. Now let's have a look what we have done. Yeah, I like that better. And actually we're almost there. Just a few more settings and the sequence is good to go. Highlight the composition layer and add a drop shadow. Pick a color from anywhere within the video frame. Max out the opacity, set the distance down to zero and increase the softness way up to about 200. And finally, all that is left to do is to adjust the sound. A hologram from your phone probably does not have as clear sound as this. So we can just search for high low pass filter and apply it. Play around with the numbers until you find a good spot where some of the lower frequencies are cut. There are a couple of steps to take. And, a lot and there of you have it. Tips what did you think of the sequence and the techniques I showed you? Let me know in the comments below what kind of videos you would like to see in the future. Also, let me tell you, I got some pretty interesting stuff coming up, so make sure you're subscribed and turned on the notifications to not miss out on those. If you enjoyed this video, smash the like button. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers! Mm -hmm.